Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to walk through at a very high level how I think about kind of the data landscape for Azure services. A lot of people have kind of asked for just an overview of you hear all these different terms like data factory and synapse and data lake and HD insight. Where do they fit in the overall picture? So my goal for this video is to really just walk through maybe kind of an end to end data flow and the different components where they would fit. As always, if this is useful, uh, please go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to find out about all the latest videos I create. So I think about as an organization, we have different types of data. Now that data could be structured, i.e. it could be in some kind of relational database or NoSQL. It could be semi-structured. So when I think of semi-structured, if, if this over here is something like a, an RDBMS, like a SQL Server or an Oracle or kind of this NoSQL, well, this could be something like a self-describing. It could be a JSON document. It could be an XML file. I might have unstructured. And when I think about unstructured, well, this really could be anything, any kind of document. It could even be images, videos, anything at all. So we have all these different types of data. Now that data may reside kind of on premises or it may exist in the cloud. Now this cloud could be Azure, it could be Microsoft 365 services, it could be Dynamics 365, it could be a completely other cloud. So there's all different options for where that data may be in all these different formats. The data could be coming in at a huge velocity. It could be coming from like IoT devices, for example. And so maybe I'm using Event Hub to kind of get that data, this massive ingestion. But the point is, these are the sources of our data. And generally what we want at the end of the day is to answer questions. We want to get value out of that data. So at the end of everything, there's probably kind of some user, uh, an analyst of some kind that wants answers. They have questions and they want to get answers out of that data. So they might interact with tools like Power BI to actually visualize and run queries against that. But the challenge is, um, it's not in the right format. I've got all these different types of data in different places, and I want to be able to answer questions. So I have to get the data uh, into the right format, and I have to get it somewhere. And typically what we think about in terms of getting it somewhere is we think of things like a data warehouse. Now this used to be kind of SQL Data Warehouse. Now you're kind of here, this is like a Synapse. So you're here to talk about Synapse. Now Synapse is more than just a data warehouse, but it includes a data warehouse. So that's where we're gonna bring the data in and put it in a structure that I can actually start to ask questions and get answers in terms of value for my company. But I have to, I have to convert that to be able to get those answers. So what we have to do is various types of actions on the data. Now this might be cleaning the data in terms of maybe removing duplicates, standardizing formatting, removing invalid results. Uh, I might do things when I think about wrangling. So when I think wrangling, this is about really converting it into a different structure and preparing the data to get it ready for my desired model. You'll hear things about map reduce, where it's a two phase process where I map it into these kind of key values. And then once I've done that, I can now run these reductions against it to make it easier to process. But really these are all about transforming the data because I have the source over here and I wanna get it to a sync. So source to sync, so I can actually answer questions. So how do I do this? What are the transformation solutions that I can actually leverage um, to do this? So one of them is HD Insight. 
Now, HD Insight is really about this idea of having these easy, open source analytics services. It's not just one thing. There are many different types of service within HD Insight. Now, some of the major ones are things like Hadoop. So when, it, when you hear the words Hadoop, that's really where you start thinking about MapReduce. Hadoop is maybe this original, it's disk-based, yarn-based processing, where I divide those tasks into smaller chunks, and then I run these reductions on them to actually restructure the data. It also has support for things like Spark. Now, Spark is disk-based. So this is uh, going to obviously be much faster, providing I can bring the data into memory. It's really useful if I want to run the same things over and over again. We have things like Kafka. So with Kafka, that's really all about streaming. Hey, I have this big data streaming. Um, maybe it's, you can imagine a factory or Internet of Things. I have this constant stream of lots and lots of events coming in, and I need to be able to process it. There's things like Hive, there's Interactive Query, there's Storm, there's HBase. There's all these different services. But they provide me ways to do this kind of cleaning, this wrangling. And then you'll hear about Databricks. So Databricks is essentially created by the same people who created Spark. So it's built on top of that same kind of idea. And Azure obviously has a Databricks service. So I have that capability. So I can use HD Insight. I can have this Apache Spark-based Databricks service. It has auto scale. It's using VMs and storage behind the scenes. But again, it's this in-memory idea of transforming. I've got this source of data, and I want to get it into a different format so I can go and get answers from it. Databricks also does other stuff. Um, there's an idea of a delta lake. So you have a data lake, which I'm going to talk about in a second. What Databricks does is it puts on top of the data lake this uh, parquet kind of format, so I can actually run queries directly against the data in the data lake um, without having to bring it into something else first. So Databricks has a whole lot of good stuff. But before we talk about the data lake, so what have, I, what have I got here? So if we think about this idea, you have the sources, we have the sync, and then we have the transform. So you'll often hear kind of this idea of E, T, L. Extract the data, transform the data, and then load the data. And that's great. And it was really designed around the idea that, hey, you've got all this data. All I need is the data in a certain format to answer my question. And this really comes from the days where I still had hair. So this is a really, really long time ago, where storage was really expensive. And so, yes, we dumped everything we didn't need. We transformed and just got out what we needed to answer the question. The challenge with this is we can only answer the questions we have today because we're dumping out everything else. We're only transforming the bits we need. Well, it's not the case anymore. Storage is really, really cheap now. So we have this concept of a data lake. So now what we have, so I can't really draw a lake, but we have the idea of a data lake. And for Azure, this is the Azure Data Lake Service Gen 2. So that sits on top of Blob. Now, because it sits on top of Blob, we get benefits of Blob. Things like access tiers. We have the idea of kind of hot. We have the idea of cool. And we have the idea of archive, even. And there's kind of a lifecycle management to move data between it. So what we can now do is, as the data comes in, instead of transforming it and then loading it, this kind of evolves to the idea of extract, load, transform, and then load again. I.e., we bring it in and we keep it in the raw format. Then we transform it, and then we load it into the target, and then run queries against it. But the benefit now is I have it in that raw format. 
if I have new questions tomorrow, well, I can go back and transform it in different ways, store it in different ways to answer different questions. So that's where you'll hear this merge of ELT. So the data lake facilitates that by giving me now the ability to store it in the raw format. Again, documents, images, parquet files, anything I really want, I can put in there and I'm getting all that lifecycle management to move things around automatically. Again, Databricks adds these great services on top of the Delta Lake to make it even easier to interact with. So the idea is that data's flowing through. It's coming from places, it's getting written somewhere, it's transformed, it's written somewhere else. Well, I kind of have to control that. Something has to manage those tasks. And that's where we have Data Factory. So if I think about, hey, we have all these data sources and the data has to kind of come into here, then something triggers these transforms to bring it into here, and then it kind of goes into here. And again, there's other types of data storage. Depending on my goals, I might write it to Azure SQL Database, Cosmos DB, uh, the Azure Managed Database for Postgres or MySQL or MariaDB, Azure Tables, part of just a regular storage account. There's all different options here. Again, this could be coming in through Event Hub and IoT Hub. There's all different ways I can have this. But Tank, Tank has to kind of manage that thing, that source to sync. So that's where we have Data Factory. So Data Factory's job is if I think about these actions, what Data Factory does is it provides that orchestration. So Data Factory is the orchestrator. It's actually gonna go and it is the control flow. So its job is to move the data from source to sync and then call other components to actually do stuff, um, to transform the data. Now Data Factory originally did have some basic mapping capabilities. I couldn't kind of map from this field to that field. Um, but it's actually got more powerful even than that. It has a full visual UI to actually enable designing these various flows. I have pipelines that can trigger based on some event happening, maybe event grid fires off the data factory. It could be a schedule to fire that off. And the way it actually works is it has an integration runtime or multiple. That is, integration runtimes are what facilitate the movement of the data. That integration runtime could run in Azure, if it's an Azure-based um, data source or target or something I want to do. Um, it could actually be my own hosted, so I can have a self-hosted. Imagine my data's on-prem. So I have these integration runtimes that then use connectors to actually connect to the various types of services in Azure. But the other thing Data Factory actually now has as well is in addition to this orchestrator, it does actually now have kind of this data mapping capability. And what it's doing behind the scenes really is it's using a Spark cluster Databricks. But again, it adds a visual UI. So for all of these things, it has this very nice kind of visual UI to enable me to describe the control flow but now I can even use a visual UI to help manage the data mapping. And I can do both kind of the cleaning and the wrangling type, the mapping within there. So it's really now kind of a, a full data integration service um, for Data Factory. Because behind the scenes, it's going and hooking into things like Databricks today to do other things to the data. But Data Factory's job is that control plane. It's calling connectors to get data, calling different things to transform and clean, calling to write to other places. But yes, it does have its own native capability as well if you want to use it. So that's where Data Factory really kind of fits in this all up picture. So that would get me kind of source to sync. Now, the challenge can be is that this data in the data warehouse may not be exactly user friendly. And I need something maybe to run more advanced analytics. So what we also have is the idea of kind of this Azure a 
Analysis Service. And what the Azure Analysis Service is all about is it's really two things. So one is I can create these semantic models. And what a semantic model lets me do is say, hey, yeah, look, there's a certain structure in the data warehouse, but it's really not very friendly for the end user to use. So the semantic model, I can present to things like Power BI a, a different view of the data. I can add different mappings. I can pull data in from different places. I can have functions that generate pieces of data that's now very friendly for Power BI to go and interact with. And of course, it actually has kind of the analysis capability to perform any type of analysis it needs to generate the results that I want to kind of go and show in Power BI. So this works, of course, all kind of different disparate, I'm showing data warehouses, but it can pull into other things as well. So Azure Analysis Services is the idea that, hey, I can take this, I can create these semantic models to present the data in a more digestible form and actually run the analysis that things like Power BI might request. Okay, I mentioned Synapse, and I said, well, Synapse is actually a lot more than just kind of the data warehouse. So now we think about, well, the whole eye point of Synapse Analytics is we have all these solutions, which are great, but I have to think about, well, I have to create all these solutions. I have to worry about security between them, maybe the networking between them. So what we can actually do is with Synapse, what this data factory did, well, what Synapse does is it kind of takes it all the way to here. So Synapse provides me this single kind of workspace. It has things like a managed virtual network if you want to use private endpoints. So now with Synapse, yes, behind the scenes, it's using things like Data Factory. But what Synapse gives me is this idea of this one workspace to manage the complete data integration for my whole environment, including things like the analysis services. It also has on-demand. So in addition to this workspace and calling these capabilities, I have both provisioned and I can have on-demand compute. One of the nice things I could actually do is I can run queries, for example, directly against the data lake using on-demand compute rather than my regular provisioned um, services that I have here. So I think that Synapse brings all of these things together as a single workspace, makes it easier for me to, from one pane of glass, manage my complete end-to-end -end flow. So I have a hybrid environment, on-prem, in Azure, in other clouds, coming in, data lake, various transformations, data warehouses, maybe data marts, which is a more um, collected set of data, running for analysis services to give me a semantic model to make it easy to digest. Power BI hooks into that, presents it, I've got my answers. And again, because we kept it in the raw format, I can go back at any time and ask new questions. So the other service um, that's kind of recently announced is Azure Purview. And what Purview's job really is, I'm going to kind of draw it up here. So if I think about Azure Purview, its whole job is to give me insight into my data. Now it's going to connect to data really anywhere. So this could be data in kind of any cloud. It could be data on premises. It doesn't move the data. It's kind of looking at data in place. But now it's going to give me insight into kind of like, um, what are the classifications of that data? I can see kind of the lineage. So where did it come from? What did it go through? Where did it end up? And it does that with things like machine learning, so I don't have to tell it everything to do. It will go and learn those things for me. And so the whole point now is that it's going to give me this access to give full insight into my data estate, no matter where it is. If it's in Azure, great. If it's on-prem, great. If it's in another cloud, great. Uh, it has a lot of different connectors. I obviously give it credentials so it can go and talk to those different services. And then it's going to give me that insight 
into the, the actual data I have. And once again, I can track kind of what was its path? What is the lineage actually of that data? And so that's kind of at a, a high level how I think about the data services in Azure. There are a lot of them and there are others as well. But it's really all about that complete flow through the environment from source to sync. And the goal of it really is to get me answers. As an organization, I want to understand, I want to get value out of my data. These services provide that. And that's kind of how I think about uh, they all kind of fit together. So I hope that was useful. Um, until next time, stay safe.